Safari life starts early. By the time the sun rises over the Masai Mara, the animal spotter must be in uniform and on the move. With all the precision of a military operation, Kalalui, my driver, and Wendy, my guide, stalk their prey. There, beneath a tree, twin symbols of the British Empire, watching the world go by. These two uh, fairer ones, this one and that one over there, are obviously brothers. And they've probably been just kicked out of the pride about six months ago. And they've joined up with this older male. Because they won't mature until they're about five years old. Is, are they learning from the older male? Is yeah. he sort of going to teach them? Hopefully he's going to teach them how to behave and mm. how to become real men. Mm. Lie down all day. <laughs> Is this how they spend their day? This is how they spend their day. Uh, later on in the afternoon, they might peruse the menu, and they generally kill after dark. Mm. Life isn't quite as relaxed for the vegetarians. They have to eat little and often. Now, he's a fairly young male. The old males have a very much higher, knobblier bump on his forehead. Oh, yeah. So he's quite a young mm. male. Oh, look, he's going to be on tiptoes, nearly. Now you can understand how they keep all these trees cropped. Yes. Let these two sort of almost the practicing necking. Mm. That's the way they. Um, fight for dominance. Oh, they call it necking. Yeah. They sort of stand mm. hip to hip mm. and swing their necks into each other. Oh, yeah. Who will go for giraffe? What predator will go for giraffe? Uh, lion. Leopard don't touch giraffe. Isn't that wonderful? You're doing it in the wrong way, kids. <laughs> Not supposed to hit them up the backside. <laughs> Watching other creatures' lives tends to make you forget your own. But where on a Kenyan game reserve does a human being find a bite to eat? a &K Safaris has the answer. Why is it all the different colours? The Out of Africa breakfast. Uh, coffee, please, yes, thanks. Coffee and croissants on the top of the Olololo escarpment, where Robert Redford was once buried. Uh, can I have coffee, please? Well, the green is, is the is burnt, the burnt grass. bit, yes. Well, how, how so? How's it green? Because we've had a little bit of rain. So what they do before the rain comes is they burn yeah. extensively to burn all that rank stuff and get rid of it. And then, of course, as soon as the rain comes, all this green grass pops up. Oh, yes, please. Thank you very much. Um, what, why is the Maasai Mara unique? What makes it special? Well, what's unique about the Mara, mm. I suppose, is it's just uh, an extension of the Serengeti. Um, just because there's a border between, that's why they've named it differently. Um, Maasai Mara being spotted or dotted. And the Serengeti, which is the mm. correct name for the Serengeti, means wide, empty place. Was it anywhere? fenced at all as no. a park? No, no, no. It's completely open and the animals, of course, don't know anything about borders and they just pop in and out as they want, like uh, so the migration. Yeah. While we have our scrambled egg and bacon, the zebra and antelope have their grass. And the cheetah have their zebra and antelope. Lower down the food chain, storks and vultures have their own out-of-Africa breakfast.
the heavens open and the Masai Mara turns to impassable mud. We've nothing to do but sit and wait and listen to the sound of smug hippos. <laughs> Next morning, we set out to see Kenya from a different angle, in two of the largest hot air balloons in the world. Each one stands 90 feet high and carries a dozen people. Have you been ballooning before? Most of my basket are American. Okay, and you went ballooning? Palm Springs. Palm Springs. Oh, yeah. Aspen. In California. Aspen, Colorado. Aspen, Colorado. Yeah. The pilot is incorrigibly British. Will we clear the other balloon or not? What do you think? <laughs> that was going to be a little uh, <laughs> Nice start. <laughs> Ahead of us. It's a grey, gloomy dawn. As we rise above the Mara River, the first doubts begin to creep in. Do we see a lot of game usually? Yes, yeah, we're only just into the flight. You know, there's a lot of water back ahead of us. The rare appearance of any animal has an electrifying effect on the basket. So, what do you think of it so far? I love Wonderful. it. Wonderful. We're having it's fun. Incredible. Yes, yes, I love it. It's absolutely incredible. Good. Well, I'm gaining a little bit of height, uh, and then we can go uh, a little while without putting a burn on. But my spirits, like my hat, are sagging a bit this morning. It's more like a November day in Manchester. I could do with some of the pilots' enthusiasm. How long have you been ballooning here, Joe? I came here in 1983. I came for three months. I've now been here eight years and three months. <laughs> it's about 2,000 champagne breakfasts. <laughs> How did you start ballooning, though? Did, was it, uh, were you a pilot already? No, no. I started uh, just as purely as a hobby. And then a few months later, I managed to join a balloon syndicate. Yeah. What's the training for this? How long do you have to... How many hours do you have to learn before you're pilot or something like this? Well, here, we need a minimum of 300 hours as, as P1, pilot in charge, before we can actually... Uh, take anybody. Mm. We've got very big balloons. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the world's top balloon operations, so we can afford to be a bit choosy about yeah. our pilots. Why do you have the biggest balloons in the world here? Is there any because conditions reason? are good enough and the experience is good enough to actually fly these things. As the balloons go down, the sun at last breaks through and the planes come to life. Do you ever see cubs any smaller than that on the move? No, you don't see them very often. In fact, these are the first cups I've seen this year, and it's already October. Now that little one has followed Mummy, the other three are down there. What does that mean? That one's well, weaker or stronger? That one is a strong one. He's a dominant one. Where? Could be a male. Definitely when he gets to six or eight months, he's the one that's going to show off for the tourists. <laughs> I think oh, the two on the hill. Look, 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 they're going down now. Oh, yes, that's right. You're going the wrong way, kids. They're so cute, but one of them is very runty, I think. The, that small one was obviously the one that tried to get up the wrong way. Now she may be going to hide them. Yeah, there they are. Oh, maybe she's not. She, she feels pretty secure there. Yeah. Leaving them to their own devices. So she's now with the three. Is she just going to leave that one behind? No, I, well, I hope not. Now she's going back, she's turning back. Yeah. And they're all going off very purposefully, yes. Maybe she's gone to look for the other one. It's rather a relief, I thought, you know, from what you were saying. It was a weak one, she'd just leave it behind. Yeah, very often that's what happens to the runt of the litter. Oh. Yeah, she's found that look, she's picking up. Oh, yeah, yes. isn't that great? Yeah. I love the way how he keeps his feet up, doesn't let his feet yes. drag on the ground. He looks absolutely so he's had it, but I suppose he just 
dropped. <laughs> Very summary. Plop. Extraordinary. Learning trunk technique here. Yeah, look at this. So cute. Little one, still very close to mum. Is that because we're here or is that yes. where they normally they're, travel? They're, they normally travel oh, like sorry, that. A good pair of tusks. Our babies suffer terribly from uh, sunstroke. They always have to be uh, under mummy's tummy. A mud bath? It's wonderful to watch mm. them bathing. And you know, in the dry weather, if they find a pool and they bath, then they seem to dust themselves down yeah. with, with earth. This is probably to protect their hide and maybe to get rid of parasites. Yeah. Look, see, he's washing behind his ear. Yeah, yeah. And now he's rubbing his yeah. eye. Yeah. That's great. There doesn't seem to be any water there. I mean, it's there, just there's a, a it's little really puddle. swamp. A... Yeah, just a little puddle. Mm. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> It's so funny to see them do that, isn't it? Look, oh. Oh, bliss. The animals are constantly on the move. These wildebeest are returning south in their millions on their annual migration. The skill of the safari driver is to know where they are and why. In Kabagiri and Kalalui, we have two of the best. How old do you have to be to drive in Kenya? Uh, you have to be, now, you have to be 24 years to drive a vehicle. Really? Yes. And that includes private car? Yes, everyone must be 24 years. How old are you? Now I'm 33 years now. Can I ask how old you are? Me? Kalalu, yes. You don't have to answer, I just, you know. What do you think? Oh, I should think in your early 40s. More than 40, my friend. More than 40, well. Yes. Uh, 50? Yes, <laughs> nearly. <laughs> nearly 50? Yes. Uh, well, all right. 50, More than 50? Uh, 52? Yeah, you near to catch. Am I within okay. five years? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old me, because my father is not in the school, and he's not right when I born. So I'm thinking I am 50. Three or fifty-four between there. Yes. <laughs> How old are you? Oh, I'm I'm forty-eight. Forty-eight. Yeah. Oh, you are very young. Thank you. But I don't know very as much young. as you know. Can I do it? This yeah. morning, when, when we were going through a herd of wildebeest uh, and, and zebra, for the first time, I heard a sound, the sound of zebras. It's a very strange noise. But what is it? Yeah. What is that sound yeah. zebra make? I hear the zebras make noise. <laughs> Yeah. When, do they, when do they make that noise? When they're frightened? It's because they are scared or sometimes they are warning. What about, I bet you can't do hippo. <laughs> There's a lot of... <laughs> they did that all night for three nights at the camp. Always. I all kept night. thinking it was me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you are, I kept going, you are, to the, going to the toilet thinking it was me, but you know... It was... You know the toilet in the, in the, in the water. You and hear yeah. that? What? You hear that? Yeah. OK, last one. Thompson's gazelle. <laughs> Which, you don't want to do it? Oh. Same <laughs> to you. Is that really what they do? No, they, they are not uh, much sound. But they make now it's about warning or they're calling the baby. What is it again? <laughs> Not a very nice way to carry on, is it? <laughs> so wonder they have any friends. No yeah. wonder they get eaten. Like the wildebeest, we too must keep moving. Lake Victoria blocks our way west, and to regain 30 degrees, we must first make for Dodoma in Tanzania. From there, we hope to pick up a train to the shores of Lake Tanganyika. It's another thousand miles of detour. The sight of the Kenyan border post offers encouragement and also a reminder that travel in Africa can't be rushed. Right on the border, we find a group of migrants. They're a long way from their territory. So where are you all from? 
Australia. New Zealand. New Zealand. Australia. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and where are you going? Well, we're not going anywhere at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Where do you I'm reckon you're going to go? Hmm? Hopefully down to Harare. We get there. In five weeks. In this? Yeah. yeah. We hope. Yeah. <laughs> we've, been, we've been push starting for the last four days, so. Do you have all your food with you and yeah. provisions? Yep. Yeah, all underneath. Stale bread. All the markets on the <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be a lot staler by the time you get to the yeah. So where did you start from? Nairobi. 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 Yeah. Is this, a big ho is this holiday of a lifetime? <laughs> yeah, yeah. adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Driver looks done. absolutely shattered. <laughs> How are you? Oh, right. Yeah, not much to drive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What is this? Is this uh, it's also a pretty ancient vehicle? It is. It's a uh, 1959 MAA in German. Yeah. Built for the Russian front, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how they ever got as far as they did in the bloody thing. Yeah. Yeah. So are you the tour, are you the sort of guide? Or uh, yeah, me and Dave here. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, what's Dave? Dave. Are oh, you Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've been away from home a long time. I've been about sexual differences. Yeah. Hi, Dave. Well, yes. Well, if we can be of help, we will. Great. Maybe, but, well, uh, really I, I don't know, yeah. I think we've got it going now that we've all connected as long as up. I don't have to push. Oh, I'm <laughs> that's exactly what you have to do. <laughs> really? All hands, okay. All hands, okay, gang. Let's Just this once. Bye. Okay. As the German army pushes forward, so do we, into country number 11. I'm immediately endeared to Tanzania, the only country I've ever been to with its name on the gate. At the border, there's little traffic, but a lot of bureaucracy. It takes four hours to complete our paperwork. Wendy has stayed behind in Kenya, but Kalalui and his friends have agreed to take us on to the railhead at Dodoma. Our route now takes us across one of the richest areas of wildlife in Africa, the Serengeti National Park. It's lunchtime in the Serengeti, and wildebeest is dish of the day. The lions have first choice. Vultures wait to help with washing up. It looks gruesome, but at least these lions are free to hunt. Before the national park was created, anyone with a license could have shot them. This is epic country. The Rift Valley is studded with extinct volcanoes. Here, the earliest evidence of human life has been found. Maasai cowbells have been described as the sound of Africa. Here, cattle pass along the northern slopes of what is undoubtedly one of the sites of Africa, a volcanic crater 12 and a half miles wide. Well, that is incredible. One of those childhood dreams, ever since I could speak my first words of Swahili, I had to go to the Ngorongoro crater. And here I am at the Ngorongoro crater, and now I'm here. I don't really know what to do with it. I mean, it is, it taxes the superlative. Stupendous, amazing, fantastic. You can't take it home, you just gotta leave it here, so. Have a look at it, make up your own word for the Ngorongoro crater experience. Not for the first time, I want to stop the journey. To stay here, surrounded by all these splendors, seems ridiculous to say I have a train to catch.
After driving every hour of daylight on roads of dust and stones, we reach the capital. Few more exhausted travellers can ever have checked in at the railway hotel Dodoma. There's nothing really wrong with the railway hotel. My mosquito net had holes in it, admittedly only three of them, each big enough for a small pterodactyl to get through, but there was plenty of art and even live music. It's certainly very handy for the shops. Dodoma city centre is full of things to see. A road sign reminds us that in Swahili, pole pole means go slowly, as if we didn't know. The buildings of Dodoma say a lot about the country. This is the Tanzanian parliament, modest and accessible. But dwarfing everything else are the Christian cathedrals. Religion seems to be the growth industry here, one of the few forms of foreign investment the government has no qualms about. Our train should have left Dar es Salaam 24 hours ago. It hasn't turned up and no one seems to know where it is. For us, it's an absolutely vital connection. From here, we make a sharp change of course, back to 30 degrees, to Lake Tanganyika and the heart of Africa. As soon as the train comes to a halt, activity erupts all around it. The station becomes a marketplace. It's hot, noisy and confusing. Not the best time to leave friends behind. Cheers, Capogieri. Thank you very, very much you know, been for, so good. for driving us and putting up with us. And it was a long way you came with us, and thanks very yes, much. Yes, we know, very but great. we wish you a very, very good journey. Okay, and Have you a good time. Find so. a nice girl. Oh, Settle yes, down. we'll find it. Hey, okay. 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 great. Thanks ever so much. Yeah, we'll Thank you up. for everything. Sorry for bumping, mate. The bumping, yeah. that wasn't your fault. You just tell the, the road menders. I've got something for you, because he said you wanted a map. Oh, yes, thank you very much. So have much. that. I'll, I'll find that. I'll ask. Thank Someone will know the way. <laughs> yeah, bye, Nesmus. All right. Thanks very much. Thanks again. Our fourth driver has just been to hospital with malaria. Okay, yeah, I'm very yeah. okay. Take care. Okay. Thanks very much indeed. See you. Yeah, we'll miss you. <laughs> we'll miss you. Have okay. a good time. Safe journey back. Mind the bumps. Bye again. <laughs> Bye. There's a whole unit luggage in here. That's why I can't get on board. A unit luggage, four chickens, and three ladies from the Christian mission. Dodoma slips away. The bush closes in, dry and empty, apart from the odd cathedral. The restaurant car's packed. These travellers are the elite of Tanzania, civil servants, doctors, footballers. What team do you play for? No. Yeah. CDA. CDA. Uh, is your team... Are you, do you have division, like a sort of... A second division. Your second division? Uh, yeah. Hey, well... 
that's a mean looking fish. Uh, what is this fish, do you think? I don't know. <laughs> Just eat it, eat it and see. He tells me the initials of his team, CDA, stand for Capital Development Authority. Not an easy one to chant on the terraces. The fish is quite edible, if you have a degree in microsurgery. Yeah. <laughs> tea for a minute, but there you go. Do you serve tea? Chai? No chai? Harold. Do me some tea. He's going to get some? Very good. Okay. Thank you. One tea, no sugar. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Myself pleasantly surprised by a choice of toilet facilities. Have a very high tide now. It's my tide that you're up here. Nothing there. There's nothing not there. Not a single thing. Vanished. Gone. Have a look. Not the stuff. Eighteen hours into the journey, and I'm still looking for the high type. <laughs> the train, like most African trains, is not time away from life at home, but a continuation of life at home. At one point in our journey, a baby girl is born in the restaurant. Certainly the best thing they produce. The train is always full because it's the only way of crossing the country. There are no roads here, only hundreds of miles of swamp. At every station, however remote, our arrival is a major event and a major boost for local business. Boys click money at me. Men click mouse traps. Yeah, leave her from my room. Somewhere in all this, you could probably find a pair of cut final tickets.
drawing very close to the centre of Africa. Not at all how I imagined it. Where are the jungles and the drums and the shadows flitting amongst the trees? Lake Tanganyika, a place of romance and mystery, could well be a Scottish lock, give or take the odd banana tree. Bat's darkest Africa was just a state of mind. Journey's end, 27 hours after leaving Dodoma. And I never did find the high type, or a water supply, or a fan that worked. In fact, I feel like a used paper bag. But it's not so much what I feel like as where I am that's important. Well, this is a major milestone. This is Kigoma. So we've completed a huge month-long sort of arc round from Khartoum to get us back to 30 degrees. We're on 30 degrees. A little bit late, but not late enough uh, to miss the boat, which uh, leaves very soon. That will take me down on the next stage of the journey south at last, a long way south, down Lake Tanganyika to Mpalungu. Kigoma is a surprise. It's endowed with some fine buildings, built by German colonialists who saw it as an upcountry health spa. The railway hotel, where the clear waters of Lake Tanganyika stretch across to the mountains of Zaire, looks healthy enough. Sadly, it isn't. This corner of paradise is serious mosquito country. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy getting bitten <laughs> while I'm doing this. Ah, that's good. Now then, that's not bad. Not bad. Hey, I did it. <laughs> ah, it's wonderful. Next morning, I learn a few sober realities of life from our taxi driver. He also turns out to be the local doctor. The chances of you are getting serious malaria when you come to this area are higher because you don't have any immunity to malaria because you have not been exposed to malaria. So the exposure will prevent me, who is indigenous to this place, from getting malaria, but you will be at great risk of getting malaria, and if we both get malaria anyway, you will suffer, you stand a chance of suffering a more severe malaria than I would stand to, to suffer for the same number of parasites in the blood. Cut off from the rest of the country, except by boat and train, Kigoma has developed the easy-going, cosmopolitan atmosphere of a port. Its cultural connections are as close to Zaire and Burundi as they are to the rest of Tanzania, and perhaps closest of all to America.
trade carried on around Lake Tanganyika has not always been honorable. A little way down the coast is Ujiji, once the slave capital of Central Africa. It was the horrors of slavery that brought Livingston here 120 years ago. How far is it to Ujiji? Ujiji. Near the Bangwe. How many hours? Uh, one hour. Ah. What is uh, at uh, Ujiji? Is it a Ujiji. town? Ujiji is a town. They want uh, in the village of uh, Rivingston. on this spot under a mango tree 120 years ago that Livingston and Stanley made the historic meeting. They were the only two white men within a thousand miles of here. They came up to each other, doffed their hats, and the following conversation took place, and I quote. Stanley, Dr. Livingston, I presume. Livingston, yes. Stanley, doctor, I thank God I have been permitted to shake hands with you. Livingston, I feel thankful that I'm here to welcome you. It's amazing that such a boring conversation could be remembered for more than a year, let alone 120 years, and Stanley was apparently quite embarrassed that all the fine words he had to say failed him at the vital moment. But that happens to all of us. Can't always think of anything to... Doctor, I thank God I've been permitted to shake hands with you. Yes. Presume I, Livingston Doctor. Nothing wrong with that. For those who want more, there is a small museum. Here, the great moment has been captured in papier mache by a local schoolmaster. That's about all there is in the museum at Ujiji. The streets of the town are probably not much changed from Livingston's day, except the slave masters have gone. Now it's a town of small businesses, Kakazinga shoe polishers, Vatican hardware supplies, and my favorite, super volcano tailoring. Lake Tanganyika, the second deepest lake in the world, stretches 400 miles down the Rift Valley. We shall travel to its southernmost point, Umpalungu in Zambia. It will be a slow journey. The motor vessel Liemba stops everywhere. It's the only link between the towns and villages along the Tanzanian shoreline. As we pull out, we pass a barge packed with refugees from the violence in Zaire. They wait patiently in the heat of the day, hoping the Tanzanian authorities will accept them. The Liemba was built here by the Germans in 1914. At the end of the First World War, they scuttled her. She spent years on the bottom of the lake before being raised by the British and put back into service. She's said to be the oldest working ferry in the world.
I'm one of the lucky ones. I have a first-class cabin. The Liemba makes about nine knots, but you can't really complain. Ships half her age would have gone to the knacker's yard long ago. Her captain is called Beatus T. Mangamba. What are the problems of being captain of such an old ship? Uh, the problem I can feel in this ship is uh, how to maneuver the ship. Uh, the ship is uh, big, but the engines are very small. So the horsepower is very small, so manoeuvring is a little bit difficult. What about your navigation in the, on Lake Tanganyika? Is that easy? Uh, yes, through experience it's okay, there is no problem, but uh, the lake is not yet surveyed, so it needs experience, familiarization. Do you not have a chart? We don't have a chart yet. Is that why you cannot go in close to any of the ports? Yes, that is the only reason, because uh, getting closer to the land, maybe we can get uh, some problems, because uh, the lake is not surveyed. The Liemba makes 15 stops, but it doesn't go to the villages. The villages come to the Liemba. Next morning, I give up trying to make my cabin work and go to wash in the first-class bathroom. Here, I can enjoy the unashamed luxury of running water unstoppable running water. The facilities may leave something to be desired, but the on-voyage entertainment cannot be faulted. Today we're attacked by a wedding party.
getting on and off is once again a scene of controlled frenzy which makes London commuters look like Zen Buddhists. Guests wave goodbye to each other and then offer traditional thanks to the wedding photographer. Well, catching the ancient and venerable vessel, the Liemba, may prove to have been the most important connection that we've made so far, because it was the only way out of Kigoma. And if we'd missed it, we'd have been stuck there for another week. Uh, and also it kind of marks the end of perhaps the most difficult countries to travel through in Africa. Uh, and we're now on course to go through Zambia, Zimbabwe and South Africa to arrive at our next most important deadline, which is December the 3rd, the sailing of the Agulas for the Antarctic from Cape Town. Uh, the only slightly ominous thing is that we have places uh, on the Agulas a scientific supply ship. They're not yet confirmed and we haven't heard whether they've been confirmed or not. That could be because we've been uh, in the back of beyond and the communications are very difficult in Tanzania. So hopefully we'll hear in Zambia that uh, we've got those places and uh, we're all set for the, uh, for the South Pole. As we approach the green and welcoming shores of Zambia, I have the distinct feeling that we have been through the worst. I think that must be about the fourth time I've felt that. Is escape to a paradise island the answer to heal a life? A filmmaker believes so. The beach isolation in paradise at 10 to 11. Convinced no one else will care and that the bones belong to the murdered girl, Brand takes on the case alone, Mystery Road at nine. <laughs> 